Hello and guten Tag. My name is Max. This is Make Modify and <laughs> yeah, there was not a video in a while, but um, yeah, life is very busy. Anyways, um, we are here at my CNC machine. Um, one thing first, this is not a product review channel, but um, if you like me, uh, our hobby is in CNC machining. And you watched the pros, you probably have seen some people using these uh, 3D touch probes where they have um, their stock and then they want to reference the sides or the, uh, the center of the circle and they go deep, 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 and then they basically have the center. And um, that would be a dream. But when you look at what these uh, touch probes cost that they mostly mostly use, they oftentimes uh, cost more than a hobby CNC machine. And yeah, that has been the fact for quite a while and in recent times it became cheaper and now these touch probes only are like, the cheap ones are like 200 plus. And that is still too expensive for me. And uh, so I kept uh, looking on AliExpress if something might pop up. And in fact, something popped up. And um, yeah, as said, this is not a review channel, but um, I could not find information on this on uh, YouTube. So um, I will do it. This is basically what I got. This is a uh, DIY Zero 3D Touch Probe version 2021. What was that a nice year? Just Corona. Uh, anyways, um, it has a 6mm shaft. It's a NPN normally opened style. And this is what it comes like. It also comes with a cable that I've already installed. Uh, yeah, focus. That pretty much looks like USB-C and in fact it is. Um, but you can't use just a standard USB-C cable because um, I tried it uh, or I, I reverse engineered the cable and it's basically the um, uh, ground VCC and the... What was it called? Um, yeah, I'll put it here. Anyways, um, yeah, this is just this cable. It has um, three uh, leads on the other side, as mentioned, uh, VCC, ground, and uh, the signal. And so let's have a look inside. Um, that is exactly how it comes. On top you have a small Allen key for uh, adjusting it. But it should be calibrated by uh, by the factory already. Let's have a look. There's a, some paper. Uh, this paper basically tells you, yeah, it should be calibrated. Um, the date, the time, uh, yeah. Having built test equipment that does sheets like these, um, yeah, if that would not uh, uh, be intolerance, this would not go out and you would not get anything. So this is, yeah, probably it got tested, but um, um, does not tell you very much about this, honestly. And there's the touch probe itself. We have um, DC 5 to 24 volt, uh, 3 touch probe model, uh, what is it? TP05C, made in China. And um, it really feels like a good piece of equipment. I mean, it's not big uh, and not heavy, but it, it feels good, it feels solid. So the, the case, for example, it's all aluminum. Um, you have a small uh, plastic ring here that uh, should light up green when connected and um, red if it's triggered. Then you have your, your center pin uh, with a nice uh, rubber grommet, I guess. And 
Yeah. So, um, as mentioned, I hooked up the wire, but I did not uh, do proper testing with this yet since I did not find the time yet. Um, what they stress on their website is that the tolerance that they give with you is uh, 0.01 millimeter of run out can only be achieved if you have a proper uh, uh, nut in your collet chuck. And um, an AAA type with uh, the proper specification. And this is what I have in here. I uh, also got a, an extra um, balanced uh, nut and a collet, a good, a good quality one collet. Yeah. Um, this you will have to add to the cost of the probe. The probe itself is like uh, 70 to 80 euro at the moment. We'll see where this goes. But uh, yeah. So I guess um, I only have a, a cheap uh, dial indicator, but that should do. Um, I will put the uh, probe in the collet and uh, I guess we will see how the runout is. Um, I don't have fancy measuring equipment, so uh, this is more a ball, ballpark kind of measurement, I guess. But yeah, I think it's it's awesome to have a, a cheap uh, option for this. Um, if you live in Germany, there is a, someone is selling a DIY version for more than this, and my father bought it, and believe me, this one already is better. Sorry. Uh, anyways. Um, yeah, let me get this set up and we'll be right back. Okay, so, uh, as I mentioned, um, probably um, the indicator is better than my mill or my spindle. Uh, what I mean by this, you are about to see. So, um, it doesn't matter where the zero on this indicator is. Um, uh, important is the point it oscillates around. So this is just a, a six millimeter bit in the collet I will use and that should be our baseline. We could then subtract what we measure with our touch probe and then we have hopefully um, the, the uh, precision of the touch probe itself. Uh, in theory. <laughs> we'll see. Um, anyways, I'll turn this on in a low speed. And yeah, what do we have? That looks like something about... Yeah, maybe... Well, let's turn it off and turn it by hand. But if you turn it by hand, you always have the, the problem that you might uh, influence it by touching it. So yeah, let's say this is the worst case in one direction. And this probably the worst case in the other direction. So this is basically, yeah, let's say 0 0.03 millimeters of um, uh, outrun. So Let's uh, switch to the probe and see if I can measure anything. So, uh, yeah, some things I just learned. Um, when searching for a touch probe, I also like this one because it's uh, not so high. Uh, most touch probes you find on the market are quite high and so I would lose uh, in height. This is a CNC router, um, which basically means I don't have much room. Uh, in, um, in fact, I think uh, to the ground I have maybe five centimeters. Um, yeah, I really want to get the uh, Z set assembly of this uh, router a bit different to have more working height. Um, another inconvenience I, in, inconvenience I just found is um, recently I upgraded to these um, nuts because I could get them uh, in a better quality uh, cheaper, um, which use this tool. But um, 
at least with the touch probe so far into the collet, I can't get uh, the tool uh, on there. So I would have to drop the probe a bit or hand tighten it or with another tool like I just did. And yeah, now it's not easy to uh, um, touch off exactly at the tip, but um, yeah, I guess I got it there. And um, we'll see how the run out is. I'll start the spindle very slowly. You don't want to spin this too fast or you might destroy it. This is barely the, the, the minimum speed my spindle can do. Um, yeah, now we have a much higher fluctuation. Why do we have this? Because we also have this uh, leverage arm. So this does not tell us too much, but uh, yeah, you can see it oscillating around, around, yeah, it's, mm, let's say, 0.1 millimeter. Um, yeah, and uh, 0.1 millimeter <laughs> uh, is basically the precision I can get out of this. Um, yeah, so if I, if I, for example, take a cube and want to get the center and I touch it off on one side and I'm um, 0.1 millimeter to this side off and, and I don't rotate the um, thing and I touch on the other side of I, my center might be by, uh, off by 0 0.05 millimeters. Um, as you saw uh, from the quality of my spindle and all the rigidity of the setup, this is good enough for me. Uh, you will have to decide if this is good enough for you. But um, as mentioned, the deviation you now see is mostly due to my uh, uh, to my uh, to my whole spindle, I guess, uh, and not really uh, to blame on the probe. So yeah, I'm happy with this, and um, yeah, let's turn off the spindle. And uh, yeah, maybe maybe just uh, I will just tip the tip and see how it returns. Can I do this without too much disturb? Yeah. So, as you can see, if I uh, touch the touch probe, it uh, always returns to the uh, point it started at pretty much exactly. So, yeah, I believe in the quality of this product, actually. Uh, not so much in the quality of my CNC machine. But yeah, um, hope that's helped. Uh, on the inside is basically the standard design with uh, the three pins and uh, set on some balls. I found someone on uh, on AliExpress uh, uh, took some photos from the inside. Um, I'll show them here, I guess. Yeah, since I don't really feel like taking it apart and making it worse than it currently is, I like it the way it is. And yeah, uh, yeah. Hopefully that helped. Oh well, that is unfortunate. Uh, <laughs> I thought it might be a good idea to test this off camera first. And uh, doing 15 things at the same time, I forgot to plug in the USB cable. And then I was not quick enough on turning the machine off when I saw it crashing. Anyways, uh, that gives us the chance to have a closer look on the inside. Well, Bad for me, good for you, I guess. Um, I broke my <laughs> probe. Uh, anyways, now we can look inside. So, um, this is the bottom assembly. Um, of course, before I took it apart, I marked um, how it gets together. Um, yeah. Um, we have this part, which apparently broke. Um, the top piece here broke off. I'm not too sure if this is really a problem. This seems to be a laser-sintered nylon. Um, 
or something like that. Um, this small piece broke off here, but I'm not too sure how, if we really need it. Um, other than that, yeah, this is basically the, the PCB as in any touch probe. Um, it uses pogo pins to connect to the main controller PCB, which is this one. Apparently some of these probes have a problem that the the uh, USB port is not soldered on uh, properly. Probably, probably. Um, looks good in this case. Uh, yeah. When I um, reinstalled the tip and then put the probe back into the machine, I already noticed that the the USB did not go in straight, so the PCB was tilted and the probe was all the time red. So yeah, I guess the PCB shifted and now I have to um, build it back together. Um, to take it apart, there are only four screws that go in here. You don't want to loosen these screws. Yeah, sorry. Um, you don't want to loosen these small grab screws since they are basically what is centering your probe and this is what they uh, calibrated in the factory and yeah so you only want to take out these four screws here um, yeah but that's it I will take a high-res picture of the PCB and then put it back together but yeah all I can say is make sure you connected your cable to the probe before trying to probe something or you will run your machine into it and yeah you see what happens basically this is what happens if you do so so yeah we'll put this back together throw it back on the machine and maybe crash it again we'll see here we are at the cnc machine again <laughs> hopefully we won't crash it this time uh, this time first thing put it into your collet uh, screw it tight and then connect the cable immediately or you will be like me and crash it. Anyways, this is my CNC machine. It's a router with a 1.8 kilowatt spindle, I think. Um, Water-cooled, uh, ball screws, uh, some small NEMA 23, which I will replace soon, I guess. Um, I have a two length sensor and yeah. So the uh, sensor is in the colored. Um, this piece is on purpose uh, crooked. So yeah. And um, now I'm here, I'm currently using Estelcam for my CNC machine. Um, yeah, there's also a cam program which is great, uh, mostly for two, uh, maybe two and a half D. Uh, for everything else, I use uh, FreeCAD or maybe Fusion. And anyways, um, how the next part will work on your machine, um, you will have to figure it out on your own. If you use Linux CNC, there's a way. If, if you use Mark III, there's a way. Anyways, um, on Estelcam, there is not too much features in this regard. I have here the uh, button for testing and then I go to um, test platter which is basically a plate you would usually put onto your piece and then uh, test on the corners um, or in the options I have decided that my plate is zero millimeters thick and has zero millimeter walls and so now I will um, use my joystick and move my machine, my my probe over the um, workpiece, maybe a bit down also, not too much, we won't crash this. And uh, I will keep my hand on the uh, feed rate uh, override so I can do it faster or, s or slower. Anyways, now um, I can get uh, XYZ or XYZ and uh, tilt. Um, yeah, let's test the XYZ first. So I'll push this button, but I'll focus on the workpiece and say go. And now it should. Yeah. 
that's maybe a bit too much of travel it is uh, set to 20 millimeters now let's do this a bit faster and then slow down maybe and there we have it now it has placed the uh, probe exactly above the corner or where the corner would be if this would not be tilted too much so uh, yeah let's uh, try the tilt version i guess so now i'm again hitting the uh, x y z and tilt button first point a bit faster maybe So, yeah, now the uh, coordinate system is turned a bit. Now when I would load my, load my G-code, the tilt would be um, cancelled out, basically. That works great. Um, what I can't see yet is that I could um, also find the center of a circle with this uh, Estelcam tool. Don't know if this is possible. Um, we'll have to look into this. But basically, this was um, how the probe works. Uh, it works. Now you already have also seen <laughs> how it looks on the inside. Um, also, what would break if you would crash it like I did on uh, on the Z direction. And yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching. As mentioned, this will not be a review channel. I hope to be back with a project soon. Um, if you want to buy one of these probes, I'll put a link in the description disclaimer. This will be an affiliate link. Also, the, uh, the producer does not know that I'm doing this video. But um, if you don't want to click the affiliate link, I also uh, post um, what you can search on AliExpress and then you can search it on your own and don't hit the link. It's up to you. Anyways, um, thanks for watching and hope to see you soon on another project. Bye.